Um, I would also like for this to be very interactive. So please feel free to unmute and talk, give a bit of um, your experience or yeah, anything you'd like to share. Um, sorry. All right. So to start off, I would like I'd like to hear from you guys um, just your views on um, some of the best leaders that you've worked with, if they kind of inspired you in one way or another to do something or if they didn't, what are some of the values or the qualities that um, you you bought from them and you admire anyone? Maybe I could start. Um, one of the best leaders that I have tried to work with, um, I would say number one, they were they were givers in a way that um, they were givers in a way that they did not um, try to get keep information that they feel could be useful to you. Um, so if, if if it's also about knowledge, they would freely give you just um, they would freely give you the knowledge with the hope that it might help you grow in one way or another. Um, they're also very caring and yeah as opposed to uh there are those other leaders who just do it for the sake of being applause or they just do it to get power um yeah i think that was that's one of the traits i admired from uh, a leader what are you what are your views or And when we talk about a leader, it doesn't have to be like a really supreme, supreme leader. A leader could literally be anyone. Um, no response. Maybe you can the question. Uh, the question is on the slide. So think about the best leader that you've worked with and some of the qualities that you admired from them or that, yeah, some of the qualities that you loved from them. Yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Uh, actually, I have worked with uh, one of my project manager when I was a uh, field coordinator. He was, uh, you know, uh, managing the project. It, it, it is about the inclusive education. That means accessing education for children with disability. There was an activities like uh, construction of resource centers, equipping the resource centers with assessing devices, and also uh, provision of uh, scholastic materials for children. So in this case, you know, he was not only sitting in the in the office, but he was also working together with us uh, as a field coordinator. It was fully my responsibility, but always he was supporting me by just doing the activities together. And he was cooperative and collaborative. Even when there was a budget scarcity, even he was, you know, using his uh, pocket money to fulfill some uh, financial gap of the project. And then, uh, of course, the project will be refined, uh, refined, refined for him, but until that, just to facilitate the, 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 the project activities, he was, you know, using uh, any opportunities you not know, to stop the, the project implementation at the field level. So, even his approach for, for us, especially, uh, I have the subordinates, the field uh, officers under me. And, you know, during that time, he was working all with me and also with my subordinates. So I always uh, remind him, even 
it was my, 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 my referee. Whenever I applied for some jobs, I, I was referring him because he knows me very well than others. And I know him because, uh, by the way, he was uh, among the persons with disability. But, you know, his disabled, being disabled is not uh, make him to be stopped at some point. Even he was just implementing much better than other project managers in the, in the organization. So I always remind him in this regard. Thank you. Over to you. Um, thanks, Terefe. I think one of the things I've learned from that is um, as a leader, you will be remembered by how much impact you made or how you made people feel when you were working together. And I think that's a really good trait um, to also carry forward with you. Uh, thanks for sharing. Does anyone else want to share also? Yes, Tony. Okay. Greetings, everybody. Um, I just have had the opportunity to um, to work with some great uh, leaders, some great supervisors. But one in particular is someone who, as a head, has always come down the line to the uh, to the main workforce. You know, not so much about top managers and like that. Those who actually do the work. You know, um, this this man he always come around and ask as to whether you as a staff is doing well. How's you doing? How's the office? Uh, is there any problem there? You know, my office is always open. You know, you can come when there's a problem. And he always listen to whatever advice you give. So as a leader, I believe that. These are, these are some of the attributes that is good for people to have. I remember one point in time, I had uh, to make a very significant import in rescuing our institution at the time from uh, some financial issue. Because at the end of the day, they, 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 the institution found that there was some financial crisis and we wouldn't have been able to work or to run operations for that period. So we had a brainstorm, and at the end of the day, they asked me for one or two opinions, you know, solution, what will we do? And then I lay out my two points, and immediately he bought into the into the, the idea, and we worked on it within 15 days. We saw, and it was so great. So it just to say that a leader should be, you know, um, a team player. It should be a, in, in, in my own setting in Africa, we say down to earth, you know, because if you just remain on the top there, say, oh, you just want to be top manager, man, a lot of things that go on, on the ground there, you won't, you won't have any idea. So that's just my own part. Thank you guys for the platform. Uh, thanks, Tony. Seems like you had a very caring leader and also one who listens to um, one who listens to their employees to ensure their well-being, which is a very good trait to have as a leader. Um, so if we just go on, um, I think being a leader, being a leader, um, it's just, I think one of the main things to consider is you're leading people and people are, people skills, having people skills is one of the key things to have because you want to ensure that throughout um, your leadership, uh, you have ensured that everyone you've worked with um, kind of is well taken care of and has been fully had and has also, you've kind of also motivated them to be their best. And it's not ignoring that the fact that in everything, in every organization, the things that happen naturally are, for example, friction, that's definitely has to happen in one way or another. Confusion has to be there. And also things like underperformance. Um, but as a leader, uh, you knowing exactly how to handle this kind of situations or 
anticipating this kind of situations to happen and knowing how to handle them well when it happens is also one of the great traits to have. Um, so with that said, everyone has the capacity to everyone has the capacity to be a leader. So aside from uh, the friction and the performance and confusion that happens, um, everything else requires leadership skills. And by when we say a leader, we it means that you are not in charge. Um, but you're responsible for everyone you are in charge of. So instead of uh, micromanaging people, just checking up every time, how, where are you with this? I mean, it's necessary if you want to ensure the project well, but you also are responsible for everyone you are in charge. That means you they, are, they need to be aware of the direction they're going. Um, they also, uh, you also need to ensure that everyone is kind of working to whatever is supposed to be done or needed. And the other thing is also when things go right, um, as a leader, you need to give away all the credits to the people or everyone who worked together in the meeting. But when things go wrong, you need to also take responsibility. You need to take full responsibility uh, for whatever happens. So you also, you need to be on your toes to ensure that um, you need to be on your toes to ensure that this kind of situation is well handled, know who to handle it, how to handle it, and all of those things. Um, so being a leader also means that you are concerned about the human beings and not just their output. So coming back again to the people skills, understanding, making sure that everyone feels well taken care of and feels happy to be there or is fully appreciated. So instead of just gauging people by how much work they produce, um, try to see the kind of impact that you have kind of given, um, the kind of impact that you, you want to leave the employee with. Um, yeah, so and I think an employee is more than uh, their output. Uh, so for them to also be productive, they also f need to feel well appreciated um, in a way. They also feel they also need to feel hard and yeah, well taken care of. And then also being a leader means uh, being able to create an environment where your followers uh, feel safe enough to say, "I need help" or "I made a mistake," and that's all in creating a safe environment for your employees to make sure that, um, or even team members, to make sure that you offer that safe space for them to express themselves, to express how they feel, and not feel judged by what whatever they think or if they contradict your thoughts. Um, they need to, the, the, the environment in which they work needs to feel safe for them and yeah, for them to be very productive also. Um, so one of the great things as being a leader, and when we say being a leader, it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, you have this team of 10 people that you're managing to do this project or uh, maybe a team of one or two. Um, it could be, it could be, it could range from a lot of things. For example, everyone, number one, is a leader in a way that you have people around you. It could be your friends, it could be um, your siblings, it could be uh, your kids or anyone. Uh, anyone who interacts or gets into your space, what exactly do they get from? being around your space or being around your environment? Um, are they getting something positive? Are they getting something that impacts them well? Or are they, are they getting just um, uh, bad vibes from you? And that's all how exactly you influence a good friendship, you influence good um, relations with your siblings or even being a dad. And the one thing or the first thing to consider is before you get to lead people or before you get to lead anyone, the number one thing you need to 
uh, understand is invest at least 40% of your time in leading yourself. Once you kind of lead yourself, you can now be able to influence or um, you can be able to easily influence or lead others without even asking for uh, without even asking for it or if you're not even in a leadership position people will just feel naturally to kind of follow you or listen to you um yeah and it's always the hardest thing to the hardest thing uh, for the hardest thing is always leading yourself and if you can lead yourself well, you can lead a nation. Um, yeah, so when it comes to leading yourself, there are three things that we're going to talk about. And this is all inspired by um, someone on the internet called uh, Lars, and we're going to see more of that. Uh, but for self-leadership, uh, why we're going to look at self-leadership number one is um, so yeah for yeah so because if you want to lead uh invest at least 40 percent of your time to in leading yourself first so within this self-leadership um or leading yourself there are three main things that we're going to look at and that's um self-awareness um self-reflection and self-regulations so these are all the three kind of building building blocks for you to be um, to have some great sense of uh, self leadership. Um, so the first one is self awareness, and this is kind of uh, it goes back to being um, aware of yourself um, and the number one of the things you can do um, to have that self-awareness is to uh, do like a self-assessment uh, check so it's like a character traits check so kind of understanding your character how you behave uh, when certain things happen or etc so some of the things that you can ask yourself is uh, maybe you don't understand yourself fully well but some of the things you can do is number one, maybe question yourself. Um, uh, if you've ever been to a leader who did not impact you well or kind of made you feel agitated or um, did not really inspire the best of you, try to think of the one thing that, um, try to think of the one trait that they had. It could be that they were uh, gatekeeping very sensitive, info not sensitive, uh, they were gatekeeping information that could be useful for the whole project. Uh, so, or maybe they kind of lied for them to get, They maybe someone who lies a lot to get um, something from maybe their team members. And if you, once you have already identified one of those one or two traits that you noticed from this uh, leader who you say um, is kind of a bad leader, um, on a scale of one to five, try to gauge yourself. Um, how much do you possess of that trait? So for example, if it's the lies, um, how many times have you had to lie for a certain, maybe for work or for a project or for things to go your way? And kind of uh, now you'll be aware that, okay, I kind of process this small, this trait in, and on a scale of one to 10, um, how big is it? Is it on number five or number one? And then try to look at ways that you can improve because if, if that person who had this bad trait um, made you feel the way you felt, imagine how others would also feel um, if you continue having the same trait. So uh, think about the strategic plans that you can implement to maybe improve on that. Um, so that's number one, having being aware of your character traits and how you influence others. And then number two is um, self-reflection. So 
this you can do maybe you can take some two to five minutes per day and think about the challenges that you have that you had maybe during a certain day or if it's in the morning you can think about the kind of um, challenges that you anticipate so it could be you're going to uh, present something and you know it may or may not be um, welcomed or appreciated well with uh, the others from your team and try to think about the scenarios that you can try to think about the scenarios of how you can handle those challenges uh, very well so if it's about i anticipate um people not liking not liking this idea how exactly are you going to try to maybe convince them or maybe explain to them why uh, you you decided on this idea in the first place um so if you have already had if you already have that great idea of who your who your leader is or someone who inspires you well is uh, you can then think, okay, how would this person handle this kind of situation? And then that could maybe help you prepare for um, the challenges that you're going to face. Because remember we said uh, the number three, th the three things that, um, the three things that are, that are, you can you can kind of um, expect to have in an organization are friction, confusion, and underperformance. There could be more, but those are the main things that kind of come up. And you can think about the different ways uh, good leaders handle those challenges, and then you can be well prepared to ta handle that task. Because we also, also understand that we're humans, and we can feel agitated. Our emotions could be um, could spike either up or down depending on the situations that we get. So if we kind of anticipate those, if we anticipate those kind of um, challenges that we're about to have uh, beforehand, we will then be well composed and be ready to handle them um, very well. Um, so that's on self reflection. Uh, the last one, or the third one, is on self uh, self regulation, and this is um, kind of uh, watching how you react to different situations. So this is also kind of understanding yourself. Um, this is also um, in regards to understanding yourself and your character traits and how you react to certain situations. For example, if you are in a meeting with people and you had given out tasks to maybe um, people and you expected during this meeting they present it to you, and then um, if you ask someone, okay, how did have you finished the report? And then they're like, um, not yet, I have not finished. Um, instead of reacting uh, very, in, instead of having a very high or a bad reaction or getting super angry at them and um, maybe saying words that you would regret later on, try to calm, the, calm yourself down and then um, imagine or just think about it um think about the situation um strategically so on a scale of one to ten how important was this report in the first place is it is it 10 if it's 10 then you really need to emphasize on the importance of them having that report done and the kind of impact that it will have if it's not as high priority um then you can choose instead of reacting to instead of reacting to things uh, really badly you can then um, you can just uh, maybe try to handle the situation in a more calm and composed way um, yeah that's on that's on self-regulation so that's just an example of how to regulate yourself in such situations um, and then also try to understand um, how you react to different situations so uh, this could come from maybe experience how this happened last time how did i react to it and what were the consequences or um, things like that and they could be different depending on how uh, 
on how on our different day-to-day -day lives, who we interact with, the kind of work we do, um, etc. Um, but yeah, it's important to have that uh, sense of self-regulation in a way, uh, because we are also trying to build good and strong teams who we can work with for a long time and ensure that uh, everyone feels safe around uh, or feels uh, their best when uh, working or in a certain place. Um, so according to Lars, there is a certain, this is one of his formulas of the kind of problems that leadership have that leaders have on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so the first one is they have very little time and too much work. And I've attached a picture of uh, a headless chicken uh, to just kind of show how a headless chicken runs a lot. Um, thinking that so so many so many things you have to do and no sense of direction or sense of um, no strategic plan on how to actually do this work um so it's very important to when you're experiencing little time and too much work it's important to handle these things strategically so uh you can also use the different prioritization techniques that we talked about previously so if you have the many assignments or things that need to be done instead of um instead of doing everything all at once or just assigning tasks, you do this, you do that, you do that, you do this. Um, try to compose yourself, uh, really look at the things that need to be done and prioritize the different tasks that need to be done and then start with those first. And then, uh, yeah, and on when prioritizing, understand exactly in terms of, um, in terms of urgency and in terms of also how important is it in the first place. So yeah, and this headless chicken behavior is kind of also sometimes uh, related to, or could be influenced in a way by uh, maybe you're feeling anxious or maybe stressed or things like that. So as a leader, those are some of the things that you cannot ex escape but it's very important for you to understand exactly how you're going to deal with them in the first in the first place so you can anticipate exactly how to handle and it's it's going to take practice um and you might not uh do it well the first time but with practice with more experience it's going to get um better you're going to yeah, and then the second problem that leaders kind of have is handling people. And when it comes to handling people, you also need to, once you've already um, understood uh, how exactly to the self-awareness, self-regulation and self-reflection, now you have to put the same same principles, but also, but to not, you, not to yourself, but to the others understand exactly the kind of people you're leading understand how they react to certain things understand um understand how they like to be managed understand um what makes them more productive in a way uh understand the kind of things they're mostly interested in so you can give them more work in the places or areas that they um that they kind of excel in um really try to understand the people that you're working with understand more as much as you can about them and try to uh ensure that um you as a leader so if because everyone in the team will always look at you or kind of uh, look to you for answers or things like that um so if everyone feels safe enough and happy to work around you um then you're going to have a smooth running and the other thing that comes with leadership is power and i know men kind of understand this much better than we females do um but it's a human thing for it's a it's a it's very human for people to um crave more power so um 
instead of uh so in a way power can be in a way power can kind of consume someone um so maybe you got to this level of power and you feel like oh would it be nice to get much more of this power so in a way that can kind of confuse you to um become a bad leader in a way so uh maybe using people's work or your team's work without accrediting them for the just for you to get um uh, more deals more projects without even um uh without giving gratitude or thanks or maybe acknowledging the other people who came uh, who you worked together with to get this project um so it's very good as leaders to be aware that um uh having that knowing exactly how to handle that power and also uh being aware or trying to uh yeah being aware of the kind of power that you hold and not letting it consume you instead using it for good um yeah that's that's on power so just wanted a few tips to manage people as a leader is to number one have uh, reflective listening so listen to your team's ideas uh, understand exactly how they like to be managed understand their views on certain things on certain projects on the problems you're facing also get um instead of um coming up with all the ideas on how to solve everything try to also give that a little bit of that power to your team members also try to get their view and understand okay how would you handle the situation and in a way they would feel more motivated to um, work with you. Um, the other thing is assert yourself. We have talked about it from the three um, building blocks. And also um, understand how to manage the different levels of skills. So from people with more experience to less experience, understand exactly um, how to even just from the distributing of work um sometimes it's it could be very nice to it uh, someone with less experience could feel um more motivated to work if they're given a bigger project to handle instead of um yeah uh yeah instead of giving it to someone with more experience um yeah, just play, play with those uh, things. And also encourage people to share their ideas or kind of giving this, um, and uh, yeah, or giving that uh, leadership, um, how can I say, it? Um, giving some of that uh, power to your, to your team members. So, uh, it could be giving them a certain project to hand to kind of handle. Um, yeah, but it's always good to encourage people to share their ideas on a certain project or certain things. Um, also, try to fuel people's strength and motivation. This could be in terms of team building. It could be in terms of appreciating um, each other. It could be giving them gifts, bonuses, awards, etc. Recognizing them. Um, congratulating them for the work that they've done, whether small or big. Um, yeah, just really understanding uh, the people skills. Um, the other one is to understand how to navigate live rivalry in your team. Again, this is one of those things that you can never escape as a leader. Um, rivalry will always exist between your team members um understanding exactly how to handle them very well and then the one great thing is confidence um and i think it it should be actually the number one trait as a leader so if you don't feel confident enough um i think we we as people can kind of sense um that kind of confidence from people, uh, from the way you react, how you behave. Um, so if people, and 
I think people are kind of always um, attracted to confidence or people tend to admire confidence and not so the the right kind of confidence so you could be there could be also that sense of over overconfidence and feeling like um and not treating the people uh below you very well uh because you're too overconfident but if you have that sense of the right kind of confidence it can inspire people in uh in many ways um so we are going to have a look at the leadership styles that we have before we close. And um, the first one is uh, autocratic leadership, which is mostly, it's, it's like a top-down approach. So uh, decisions are made solely by the leader without the input from the team. And um, it's good to understand this kind of, this types of leadership so you can understand which one best works for your organization or where you are um, in your kind, in your level. So um, autocratic leadership decisions are made solely by the leaders without input from the team. So um, depending on the organization again and the needs, um, is this the right kind of leadership to have for you? and you can justify this according to your organization and your needs. Um, and then there's, uh, so also you also need to understand exactly um, how the team feels about this. There are some people who kind of feel okay to just go with the flow. Um, so try to understand exactly how your team feels about this type of leadership, um, everyone from the leadership team to the team itself. And then also uh, democratic leadership is where there's that kind of collective decision making um, where you kind of encourage participation and consensus. Um, and then there's bureaucratic, which kind of focuses on the rules that are made. Um, so it could be rules or procedures to do these things or certain project or even hierarchy and uh, ensuring that just all the tasks are completed by the book. Um, and then we have charismatic, which is and which kind of inspires and motivates. And this could be through um, selling the vision. Or, um, yeah, so uh, one of the things that I can kind of think about when talking about charismatic leadership is um, there are some leaders who sell the future to your team members, and that could be very motivating um, to the team members. Um, you could also share the kind of passion that you have. It's very addictive to the others, and also in one way or another, personal charm. Um, yeah, those are kind of those are the types of. The leadership style so think about the situation you're in the kind of leader uh, that you are or are meant to be and then understand which kind of leadership style will work best for yourself and your organization um so just to finish leadership is not about titles or positions or even flow chats in an organization. It's all about how you influence one person or the other. Um, yeah, hope we can all think about that. So, yeah. Um, also, maybe just to finish, how you, what you do or the actions you do kind of inspires action or from others or kind of motivation so why do you do a certain thing or how do you do a certain thing or um what exactly do you do that could kind of motivate um others in one way or another and it's all in it could all how you do so the what the how and the what you do it can inspire others based on certain things. So it could be a certain, maybe the common values that you share with certain people. So if we share the common values, 
if we share common values and belief, I will I will tend to I will feel uh, motivated to kind of um, I will be inspired by you because that's also my my beliefs or my views. And there's also uh, loyalty, which is also a very key aspect to have. Um, trying to ensure that um, you are loyal to your people and not doing things that can kind of kill that or weaken that sense of loyalty between um, yourself. So if you've been doing this and then you do something of the opposite, you, the people who are inspired by you might feel a certain way. And um, also it comes with uh, trust and how, and empathy, how do you feel about, um, how you feel about others or how you, yeah, how you feel about others. And there's also, uh, that sense of belonging. So um, for your team members or, yeah, for your team members, they kind of need to, they will feel a sense of belonging um, with the right kind of actions that you do, with their whys and hows and, how, and what you do. Um, so that's, that's all for today on leadership. So notice that we've really spent most of the time talking about self-leadership, which is actually one of the great things to have. And remember, we're trying to um, just make sure that we inspire people in the right ways. Uh, we, in the right ways, just to ensure that they feel that sense of belonging, they feel motivated to grow more and um, yeah, I kind of motivated or inspired by you. So yeah, let's all aspire to be uh, good leaders and we try as much to kind of lead ourselves well. Um, so that marks the end of the tutorial. Uh, we, let's, do we have any question before we go to the challenge? Okay, so for today's challenge, it's going to be about leadership and we have two tasks. So let me just go straight to the task. So task A is basically just a reflection of um, your interactions with people, um, with the leaders that you've had in one way or another. So with the goal of just trying to um, change exactly how we lead others in future, we are going to reflect on the good and the bad leaders that we have. And not just about the humans themselves, but the character traits that they possess. Um, so yeah, we're going to think about the character traits of the good leaders and the bad leaders. And then we're also, so from, and then we're also going to do a sense um self-awareness check uh character trait on a scale of one to ten how exactly do i possess this good traits and this bad traits and then that will we're hoping that that will kind of um guide or inspire exactly how you lead um in future uh so that's the first exercise um uh self-awareness check and then the second exercise will be you as a leader of or managing a project. So it's just a scenario of a project, you've been given a team and certain issues that arises in the team, how exactly, if you are in this situation, how exactly would you handle this kind of situations? Um, so as always, the, as always, you are required to put your answers on slides and um, I would like to just encourage you to have, uh, well, yeah, have fun with it. And, yeah. Hassar, do you want to speak? Yeah. 
Yeah, um, try to have as much fun with this exercise. Also try to um, try to really uh, do some reflection about yourself. And yeah, remember this um, soft skills or this career skills or basically how we interact with others will greatly um, define the kind of projects uh, that we the kind of projects and the team that we build all together. Uh, so that marks the end of our tutorial today. If anyone has a question, concern or anything, uh, feel free to mention it now. Yes, Tony. Uh, I think it's just a question. Do we have this exercise already? Uh, yes. If you go to the week seven, um, if you go to week seven on the Slack group, okay. I let me just um, let me let me pin let me pin it so you can see. So it's pinned pinned to channel so if you go to all week seven at the top there you can see you can see pinned chats so if you go to the pinned you'll find week seven's career content so we stopped sending it on email because we would miss a lot of emails and we could also send emails to people who dropped out all right, I see you. Thank you. Okay. We, we, we're not hearing you. I, I'm not hearing you. I'm going to say I. Ah, oh, sorry. Um, I didn't notice I was on mute. Uh, so I think, yeah, so I was saying that, uh, oh, so Edwin says, uh, servant leadership is among the kinds you didn't you didn't see servant leadership among the kinds of leadership or maybe language barrier um so i didn't maybe use their right the same uh english uh but servant leadership i think i would relate to uh this point here so when things go right, you give away all the credits, and when things go wrong, you're the one who should take responsibility on um, exactly how to uh, go right. But also, servant leadership is also one of the great traits to have. Um, so instead of so yeah, serving serving people. Or Edwin, do you want to say more about servant leadership? It would be nice to hear your views as well. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Very well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to point it out that at the time we had that discussion, and uh, of course it has its uh, pros and cons. But uh, if you're working with this country, I think you more because they are they are passionate about teaching the work. Wait, there's. There's some kind of echo and your audio is not so clear. Um, are you maybe using a Bluetooth device or a speaker or maybe get close to your mouthpiece? Can you now hear me? 
Yes. I was saying that I was, uh, we once had this discussion and um, servant leadership has its pros and cons, but if you look on uh, the side of, of a leader who is looking at someone that is new to an activity, or a task, a servant leader will work with you in making sure that uh, you learn how to do whatever they're instructing you to do. And like uh, other forms of leadership where you just get a directive and you can't raise your hand in a situation where you don't know how to actually do what you've been instructed. So in some areas it's a win. Thank you, that was my brief addition. Um, yes, I think that's a very great point that you've added there. Um, I also like the, the philosophy of servant leadership in a way that your goal as a leader is to serve the people that you're leading. Um, that's also a very good trait. Thanks for adding that. Um, so anyone else with any comment? Question, concerns before we close. All right. Um, no, que no questions means everyone is okay. Um, as always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for spending your time with me. And I hope you learned a thing or two. And I hope you have an amazing evening or afternoon. Yeah, all the best and keep on learning. Bye.